Hello, and welcome to the Deliberate Leaders podcast. I am Katie Carpenter, Executive Health and Wellness Coach here at Deliberate Directions. So today's podcast is Unlocking Natural Wellness, Tools for Better Movement, Energy, Sleep, and Overall Health with Dr. Anthony Cutting. Dr. Anthony Cutting is a dedicated chiropractor and the owner of Active Chiropractic in Meridian, Idaho. He has a profound passion for empowering individuals to achieve their optimal health. Dr. Cutting specializes in pro providing solutions to overcome hindrances that are keeping you from living an active and healthy lifestyle. So Dr. Cutting pursued his education in human physiology at the University of Oregon before earning his Doctor of Chiropractic Medicine degree with top honors from the University of Western States. So he has nine years of practice in Eugene, Oregon, that he brings a wealth of experience and expertise to his current clinic here in Meridian, where he continues to positively impact countless lives, drawing from his own journey of overcoming sports injuries and debilitating health issues. So Anthony Cutting is committed to offering alternative solutions and facilitating true healing for his patients. His dedication to excellence and continuous learning has led him to train with some of the most esteemed chiropractors in the field, including the former head of the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic committees. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Anthony. Thank you so much, Katie. Thanks for having me. So I want to give you an opportunity to share a little bit. Tell us about your journey to whole health and how you define that. Yeah, so, you know, I I define whole health as not only feeling your best and feeling amazing, but more importantly, functioning at the highest level possible. You know, I, I believe that the if given the right conditions, the body naturally knows how to be healthy, how to be well. Um, and so, you know, we live, unfortunately, in a toxic world. But um, if we take the right steps, we can help the body express that ability. And, and you, you should be able to enjoy life at a very high level, whether you're 25 or 75. Um, yeah, my own journey, um, such that originally I wanted to be in the Air Force. I wanted to be a pilot. And, uh, but unfortunately when I was 15 years old, I lost the hearing of my left ear. And so I was no longer able to join the military. And, um, uh, so my family, we had seen a chiropractor for various reasons throughout my life, sports injuries. Uh, my dad had a chronic low back issue. So we loved chiropractic. And so I decided that'd be a good natural alternative since I couldn't join the military. So I started going onto that path and. Um, as you mentioned, I got the undergraduate degree at the University of Oregon, went up to chiropractic school. Um, and during that period of time, as I was transitioning into chiropractic school, I, I started having other health problems beyond the hearing loss and I ended up going on a just over decade long journey of trying to figure out how to get well on my own body as I'm now, you know, going through chiropractic school and then getting into my career, trying to help others. So. As I went through that, I, you know, it was a tough season for many years, but I think it fueled my passion for helping people um, get to the highest level of health and help me really be able to better relate with my patients, whether they're going through, you know, something similar to me or, or not. It's just understanding being in a dark place and then helping people find those solutions to get out of it and get back to enjoying life as fully as possible. Yeah. A decade long is quite an adventure, quite enough time to explore the depths of how you can heal. So would there be one thing that you could summarize from there that was most impactful to your health that you can just kind of pinpoint so simply now? Yeah, I would say, well, so the one thing on my own personal journey was uh, what ended up being the foundation of what I do in my chiropractic office, it's called the zone technique of chiropractic. And essentially what that is, is you're bouncing the brain itself so that it is able to better regulate what's happening in your body and control and coordinate the body and um, help it heal from injury and illness and then adapt to the day-to-day -day stress that we all are under. So in my personal situation, for various reasons, um, I was in an unbalanced state with, with the brain itself. And so it wasn't able to 
to help me heal and recover and adapt despite trying to eat well and exercise and do all the things. Uh, so that was the, I guess, the big turning point of my own personal journey. And then beyond that, it's just continuing to have a proactive approach. You know, so much of our our lifestyle or in medicine in general, it's a reactive. You know, you wait till you're really broken and, and suffering before you go do something. But it's like taking those steps to to be proactive and stay ahead of it, especially after I healed. I have to do daily things to maintain my health and, and stay at a high level. Yeah, that's powerful. I think what I hear you saying is it, it comes from this proactive but personal leadership pinpoint, right? Personal leadership point of like being proactive is leading yourself well and leading oh, yourself absolutely. first. That's very absolutely. powerful. So I have a question for you around like talking about, you know, how can you help yourself and be proactive or what are some ways that we can kind of mitigate the use of over-the-counter drugs and and help ourselves and utilize things that are like strategies at home or things I can utilize within myself to help with pain. Like the very common things like, oh, I've got the sciatic pain or I've got, um, you know, a headache or, you know, achy knees today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all of those, you know, are symptoms that something's unbalanced in the body. And so a couple of keys that I, I tell people to focus on is, you know, you want to look at what, what are you doing with your nutrition and is that, are you eating foods and taking in beverages that are supporting health, decreasing inflammation, helping your body, um, you know, heal at the optimal level and function at a high level, or are you putting things into your body that are toxic essentially, right? So what kind of, how are you feeling your body? And then the next thing is, you know, uh, getting adequate sleep at night. So many of us were just in this fast paced world and we skimp on sleep and that, that's kind of the last thing. And you just try to push through and rely on caffeine and other stimulants and that that's not sustainable long-term. So really taking the time to get adequate recovery. Um, and then as far as day to day, you know, movement is the key to life. And so, so many people, they just stop moving, um, they live a sedentary lifestyle, you know, when they're, we're all hunched over our digital devices for too many hours a day. Um, so I incorporate movement into your daily life and it doesn't have to be, you know, hard core exercise for, you know, two hours a day, but it's, if you exercise on a regular basis, at least four or five days a week for anywhere from 20 minutes to 60 minutes. Um, and then also move throughout your day. So rather than taking the elevator, maybe take the stairs at work or you go to the grocery store, you know, intentionally park further back rather than looking for the closest parking spot. So you're moving throughout the day. Or even if you had an office job, for example, you can do, you know, every hour or not every 90 minutes, do a, a two minute stretch break or get up, grab, grab a glass of water. Or yeah. I have mobility exercises that take 30 seconds to do, but you can do those throughout your day. And it's just intentionally moving. And that that goes a long, long way to helping the body uh, be proactively healthier. Yeah, that is so potent what you just said. I heard you say, fuel well, get proper recovery through sleep and rest, and then just move, you guys. That's awesome. I agree with you. I second that. So as we lead ourselves, Often we find ourselves leading these beautiful little humans that we've had the pleasure and honor of creating and leading in this world, like our kids. And I noticed my husband thinking about this a lot. He mentioned it to me because he is a coach and a teacher at a high school and our oldest is 18 and goes to school there as well. And he said, you know, I'm really worried about this generation and their caffeine intake. And I was like, he's like, I notice it just it's out of control with the energy drinks or, you know, even nicotine with the Zins and things like that. So what are some natural ways? And I think these are going to be connected to the last question, but maybe you've got some secrets, some natural ways to increase energy without relying on energy drinks or too much coffee or caffeine. It's a great question. And yeah, I've seen the same thing in this generation. And I would say going back to getting proper sleep but how do you do that right and so the big issue i'm seeing with all of us but especially this younger generation is the time spent in front of screens and so what's happening is so many of these kids are spending hours upon hours over their screens and even late into the night 
and so what happens is the a few different things but first of all there's this blue light that gets emitted from our digital screens that will actually alter the body's brain chemistry and it it inhibits our ability to secrete a hormone melatonin, which helps us get proper deep restful sleep. So if we're looking at these blue lights, these kids, especially till late at night, and then they try to go hop straight into bed after being on TikTok or whatever, then their body doesn't produce melatonin. They don't fall asleep easily. They don't sleep deep and get that restorative healing rest that they need. So they wake up groggy and then they go and pound down the caffeine early yeah. in the morning. So that becomes a, a nasty cycle. And then the other part of the digital devices and spending so many hours over hunched over them is it's messing with our posture. You know, our heads are going forward, the shoulders slunch, slouch forward, excuse me. And that actually, without getting too technical, but it actually makes changes where in our brain, we're being in bad posture for hours on end actually overactivates what's called the lower part of your brain, which is your limbic system or your emotional fight or flight part of your brain. So their bodies go into fight or flight mode. They, they're, even if they don't think they're stressed out, they are more stressed than ever and they start dealing with anxiety, depression, being in this chronic fight or flight mode, which then inhibits sleep even worse or it wears down during your waking hours. It, it wears down your energy levels and your adaptive ability to cope with day-to-day -day life and focus like you're supposed to. And then meanwhile, also being in the slouch posture for hours on end shuts down the frontal part of the brain, which is responsible for complex thinking, social interactions, feelings of confidence and self-worth. So that combination now is leading them, like I said, in the, into a chronic fight or flight and draining their energy reserves. And so they're going into the caffeine and the other stimulants just to focus and cope. Yeah. Or yeah. You know, the other piece of that is you know, we're seeing kids get put on antidepressants and attend, you know, getting diagnosed with ADD, ADHD at alarming rates and getting put onto those medications. And that's, I think, the byproduct of what we just discussed here. Yeah. Yeah. That's really important information for people to hear for their children and helping them children, their children lead themselves well as well. Right. Is so bring this awareness of like, I have an 18 year old son now and I'm I have to let go a little bit. Like I had to let go of like setting his screen time limits and those things. And I'm like, but I'm constantly kind of checking in and planting that seed. Like, Hey, where are you at? Show me your screen time. Are you setting those limits and boundaries for yourself? Are you leading yourself well? So I think we have to give our kids that opportunity to think about it for themselves and take that accountability. Cause that in itself is also really empowering. I, I hope. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, and it's all those things, you know, not, you know, it's hard to said with a teenager, especially, you know, you're trying to give them autonomy, freedom, you don't want to sound like a nagging yeah. parent. So what I try to encourage parents to do that maybe might resonate better is this, hopefully you have a discussion with your children, you can have an open discussion and say, hey, are these things, these choices you're making, helping you reach your goals, find out what's important to them that they want to achieve. Is yeah. it academic excellence, a career they're pursuing, their sports, are they heavily into athletics and say, okay, you know, spending too much time with the bad posture in the screens, you know, taking too much uh, caffeine, not sleeping well, eating junk food. Are these things helping you reach your goals that are important to you or not? And yeah. maybe coming at it that way will help them want to take ownership of it a little bit more too. Yeah, I love that. Yes. Okay, I've got a question about one of the most powerful tools out there, I believe, is what are some natural ways, I'm sorry, how does diet and nutrition play a role in improving or worsening our health and not just diet and nutrition, like what we eat, how we eat specifically? Yeah, that, that's a crucial point, right? You, yes, of course, what you eat is important, but as you said, how? So many of us are just eating on the go um, and you're just in your car or on the run and you're multitasking and you're just quickly shoveling food in there, not taking time to be in a calm, relaxed state, you know, fully chewing your food. Um, and so it makes it much harder to digest, which takes a lot of more work for the body. Um, but then if the gut is having trouble digesting these large particles of food, for example, then uh, it can cause more 
irritation of the gut lining and inflammation, which can lead to digestive issues, which then can lead to all sorts of health problems. So yeah, yeah being very mindful. And again, I know life is busy, but if we can try to take a minute and, and carve out moments of like, okay, our meal time, it's going to be a time when you're not distracted by a million other things. Try to find a place where you can be more mindful and, and take a little bit more time to make sure you're properly eating and chewing and digesting. That will actually go a long way. It's a simple thing if, that if you focus on it, it will go a long way to helping with your health. I love that. Yeah. I think people underestimate mindful eating quite a bit, right? Even for myself as we're busy business owners, right? And we're like on the go, I got to, but often I will just take a moment and take a deep breath as I'm chewing. I'm like, oh, I'm super stressed right now. I need to calm myself down and, and just give myself that permission to, to be more mindful in those moments of when I'm nourishing my body that actually, I'm not just eating, I'm actually nourishing my body with nutrients. Just good yep. awareness. I love that. So what are the natural ways to avoid illness and support the immune system instead of relying so much on dreaded antibiotics, prescriptions, just over the counter, like cold and flu medicines that sometimes we feel like can help us in the moment, but then days later, I just feel this fatigue from it all. So do you have any like natural ways that we can avoid illness and support the immune system? Yeah, it's a great question. So I will say it's impossible to never get sick. If you do certain steps, you can minimize the frequency, the intensity, and the duration of an illness when it does occur. So the ways that we can do that would be going back to some of the things we've already touched upon is, is eating good, clean food, you're putting healthy fuel into your body, getting adequate rest on a regular basis, exercising on a regular basis. Um, but then also you can take certain supplements that can support the immune system. And again, doing this proactively rather than reactively. Don't wait till you already are sick, which they can help with that too. But if you know, okay, going into the winter season, um, you're going to start taking some supplements to help your body. Or if you tend to be someone that has allergies in the spring, you can take these going into allergy season. Or so what I tend to do is these supplements, I, I start taking them September and then I'll keep taking them until about June and then maybe take the summer off um, or you can keep taking them year long. But my little stack that I usually recommend for helping the immune system, especially respiratory system, um, is a stack of zinc, um, something called elderberry, um, quercetin, which is an herb. So that's Q-U-E-R-C-E-T-I-N. And then something called transfer factor, um, which is a protein peptide that helps make your immune system smarter. So if you have an autoimmune condition where your immune system's overactive, it's going to bring it back down to baseline and normal. If you are immunocompromised or you're you know, going to get sick, it, it's going to raise it up so that it's able to fight off the illness more appropriately. And then the very last part of the stack is uh, vitamin D3 with combined with K2. And those two have to work together synergistically to have the best effects. So that little stack is something that I take on a regular basis and recommend to all my patients. That sounds great. That sounds great. Okay. So to wrap this up, I have two more questions for you. I really wanted to, to know what, I think I know what my takeaway is from this but if leaders are listening to this today, Dr. Anthony, and they want, you want them to take one thing away from this podcast, what would that be? And like, what is it that you want them to understand more deeply about that? I would say the primary takeaway would be for families in the midst of busy lives that we all lead, how can you intentionally make the time to be together as a family connecting, you know, um, talking together, communicating, having meals together, you know, even if it's just dinner three times a week, I know life's going to be busy, but if you set aside time to intentionally do that and you're connecting as a family, and you're taking the time to mindfully eat, you know, and then taking those steps, as we said, to, to get proper sleep at night, you know, spend less time on the screen, just little things like that. 
they will go a long way to really helping you thrive and perform better and, and enjoy life better for many, many years. Well, I think you just answered my second question is what is your number one leadership tip? <laughs> but it sounded like connection and authentic connection and sharing your values through that connection. But did you have something else to add to that? I would say that's that's pretty accurate, right? Whether you're with the family or leading your kids or your significant other or whether you're a business owner leading employees um, or just leading your customers, whoever. Yeah, I would agree. Authentic connection, being present with that person in front of you, um, that they, they know you care. And so many people, they don't they don't really get uh, heard and seen. So if you if you be that exception and you focus on them and make sure that they know that you are listening and you care, uh, that they will follow you much more efficient, effectively. Yeah, I love that. That's very powerful. Um, I wanted to share with you my takeaway today is I think the most important thing I heard you say, and I believe as well, is being proactive with our help, taking that time to connect with ourselves and have that self-awareness and connect with ourselves in a way that we can understand how we need to be proactive with our health and be patient with that. So I'm very grateful for your wisdom that you are so eager to share with all of us. And so thank you for being on the podcast today. Where can people find out more about you and the wisdom you have to share? Uh, so we have a few social media accounts. It's at Active Cairo Meridian on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, we have TikTok, uh, LinkedIn. So any of those platforms, I do not use X. <laughs> I figured I got to draw the line somewhere. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, but all of those other social media, I've got a website, activechiropracticmeridian.com or, you know, in in person, we're on Fairview and Meridian between Eagle and Locust Grove, the Pine 43 buildings over there. Um, and you can stop on by, give us a call at the office um, and we'll be happy to help. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Anthony. Have a beautiful day. Thanks you too, Katie. Thank you.